you can have a million followers and not earn an income from your audience yeah. purely because of that one mistake. For years in advance, we were recording vlogs. Oh! Here's the tea, girl. We've recently pivoted from just doing funny content to actually doing content that like brands can see themselves fitting yeah. in. So do you have management or do you manage yourself? Um, so we have management now, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's been great. What would be your best piece of advice to a content creator listening to this who is trying to make it their full-time job? I would say your journey is your own. And go get your bag. Yes. Uh, <laughs> hi, my love. Hello. How are you? Very well. Very well now that I'm seeing you. Oh, in that's what I love. The iconic. Hair. I know, right? I love it when you walked in, you were like, is this all yours? I just wanted to be like, yes. Yeah. I own I own this place. I own a studio. I'm doing really well for myself. No, guys, I don't. No time. Manifest, <laughs> darling. You'll I know. I no would time. love to have my own studio. Anyway, we've somehow already gotten off topic. <laughs> Please, can you introduce yourselves to the listeners? And let us know, you know, best way, actually, how would you describe your content to someone who doesn't follow you right now? I'll describe our content as a mix of lots of things. Yeah. I would say we do the whole couple fun thing, but also we have like kind of like a meaningful message behind it. So we're trying to promote like wholesome moments, really mm. creating memories with those who you love. Mm. And we've shared our life journey since getting married. And then, you know, having two kids after that, I gave birth on the landing. My husband caught the baby. I mean, crazy things have happened oh in life, gosh. but such is life, right? It's a yeah. roller coaster. Yeah. But in that are like threads of meaningful moments and it's being able to like pause and appreciate those as well yeah. as having fun. Yeah. So life is too serious. That's it what really I'm, is. Yeah, exactly. It really is. Sometimes you just have to have a good laugh. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Talk to me about your journey. Cause I was obviously doing a lot of snooping mm -hmm. and I was on, I know, mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I found some really concerning things. No. <laughs> But I was doing some snooping and I was like, oh, okay, you've been on YouTube four years. Mm -hmm. I thought you had been on YouTube longer. Mm -hmm. I thought you were like a YouTube, like OG, like been on YouTube for a while. Yeah. And also you're active across TikTok and Instagram as well. Mm -hmm. And you're one of the few creators who have really engaged audiences across all three. Like usually they fluctuate, mine massively fluctuate, but you have pretty engaged people across all three of your platforms. So let's go right back to the beginning. Right. Talk to me about when you first first decided you wanted to start creating content with your husband yeah well actually the secret is I didn't decide <laughs> AJ decided for us so I've always had quite a bubbly personality I'm yeah. a really like people person mm -hmm. and um especially back in the day when I was in uni mm -hmm. I would speak to people randomly share all of my dramatic stories <laughs> just off the cuff and people would be like you need to have a YouTube channel you remind me of whoever yeah like Patricia Bright or yeah that. and then I'll be like uh no cringe because <laughs> people are going to think I think that I'm a YouTuber and I'm not oh, having that. Oh, that's such a funny like like process we go through internally, isn't yeah. it? People will think that I think something and yeah. it's like, who cares? You know what you think or you don't. Exactly. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Exactly. But you know, like being young, like you oh. go over in your head about mm. that. Like, what am I appearing that I think I am? Do I think that I'm too full of myself? Am mm. I, I mean, do I look like I think that I'm too full yeah. of myself? Um, was my kind of like process. I was like, oh no, I don't want that. Um, so getting married to my husband, actually when we were dating, we we're always like really good friends. And yeah. Like, start a YouTube channel, you know, get yourself out there, like record something. And I we actually studied journalism. So okay. always been into talking Great. and waffling. Yay. Yeah. That's a bit of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I already had that kind of like knack for, for talking, but I just didn't want to be on YouTube. Right. Um, so one day after getting married, my husband just decided, you know what, I'm just gonna put the shoe game up on, yeah. on YouTube and then like at least her face is out there. She okay. won't tell me off because it's not her voice, it's just right. her face. Right, okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, and then out of nowhere, that really blew up. Oh. Yeah, which was crazy. And then obviously people asking questions. Who are you guys? Mm. What's your story? Mm. And then, yeah, he just poked me a million times and said, no, you need to like record this. And yeah. I'm so glad that I did because like... You know, sometimes you're like, oh, I, don't, I won't like the sound of my voice. I won't like yes. this. Yeah, yeah. Very much overthought, but yeah, yeah it was worth it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, completely. Yeah. So that's so interesting because there are, is are there two videos in relation to your wedding and the shoe game or is it just the one? There's two, right? There's two, yeah. There's and the those, shoe game and the wedding video. So, so that was actually your first two videos. Yeah. Stop it because those are also not your most popular videos, no? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have never come across that. When I saw that, I just thought, 
oh, like maybe they've removed a year's worth of content because people just go through their content. Yeah. Okay, so for the listeners who not watched the video, break it down for us. Um, the She Game video. Mm. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. We had the best MC in the entire world. He was so <laughs> funny. Um, but also we had been together for a while. So we knew how to like, we, we kind of like, got around like how the right. other person works yeah like when it came to playing mr and mrs at mm -hmm. our wedding we we're like we're ready for this like, yeah we know each other really well and i proved that we did because we had a lot of like the same shoe going yeah. up but yeah. i think like one of like the main moments i might let you guys like watch it for your yeah part, okay right? no spoilers just yeah. give us like okay <laughs> so those were both two videos from your wedding some of the first pieces of content you ever shared yeah. and did you capture that content with the intention of being like, this is going to be a YouTube video or was it just captured because it was your wedding? Yeah, it was literally just captured because it was our wedding. And actually when AJ put it up, he was more like, oh, our guests loved it. Yeah. And we had amazing guests because they weren't like yapping while everything was going yeah. on. In the yeah, middle of the dance they knew the deal. Floor. Yeah, they, they were like, the they could sense that one day this would be a really viral YouTube video. So, so they were weird. like, let me just not. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what the vibes were though. Um, so then like when we had this like key moment in mm. the shoot, game everyone jumped off of their seats and it was just like yeah. such a great vibe yeah um so we had like the best guests and like obviously we have like a really strong relationship and mm. it was like a nice like little show of that as well so yeah yeah it was just like it was just filmed from our wedding and then thrown up on youtube amazing okay yeah. so you've filmed these two videos which you just have because obviously you're getting getting married so you have the content anyway you've mm -hmm. uploaded it it's starting to gain traction so what are the conversations that happen next because obviously you decide okay we're gonna do this like how quickly do you make that decision and how do you make that decision yeah well to be honest the funny thing is for years in advance we were recording vlogs oh here's the tea girl we were recording what? vlogs but never putting them up so we'll just record random clips of us traveling to amsterdam or to paris yeah or doing whatever now and we never thought that would actually put it up um and i don't think we have for the most part that is it's, so interesting i know i know look at overthought because i was yeah. like it can never go online um <laughs> so so you were kind of telling yourself this is just for the memories yeah just for the memes um it was just somewhere on my iphone my ancient iphone so funny. yeah yeah, so like when it came to actually, you know, seeing that people had interest in us, mm. I think that was also a big barrier. I was mm. like, will people actually be interested? Mm. So oversaturated, right? The internet, mm. I mean, back then I would say it wasn't. Now mm. it's even more and like, you know, just progress in that kind of trajectory. But yeah, I was just thinking, okay, if people are interested, maybe we can just like, you know, like pretend that there's no one who's going to see this on the other side and just sit yeah. down and have a conversation, which is what it was, our early videos, just sitting down, having conversations and vibing as, as we naturally do. Yeah. Yeah. So when did kind of Instagram and TikTok come into the mix? Was that after this? Yeah. Very ages, ages afterwards. Oh, really? Actually. Yeah. So we had been on the platform for about two years and then we were like, okay, maybe we can like try to gain some traction on other platforms. Mm. And I always had my personal Instagram and always had a love of travel actually mm. so um i'll share like little travel experiences as yeah. i'll go um but it was like what maybe 200 followers or 300 followers, <laughs> like um and then after a while we're like okay like the motherhood thing is working on mm. youtube i was sharing like what to expect postpartum mm. and that kind of content mm. and actually even when i didn't have children i was kind of like digesting mummy content just yes it's interesting like. it is so interesting sorry yeah. just to interrupt have you seen the video of the woman who gives birth like in a car on like a highway yeah that was like I remember that being one of the first YouTube videos where I was like I didn't know if I was gonna cry or what I was telling the whole world afterwards I was like this is the wildest thing that I've ever witnessed I in know. my life that she got that on video it was it's insane, insane. Oh it's, my guys God. if you've not watched it Go like watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it is insane Wild. anyway continue. yeah <laughs> so i was just like oh my gosh like there's so much content which is already out there um mm -hmm. in regards to like motherhood and things like that but on instagram mm. that's that might be like a space where you know i just feel like audiences are really tuned in especially like mm. instagram is great for community youtubers as well but yeah. it's like a bit different on instagram because yeah. it feels like you have more people who are following you rather than like when you post interesting content okay at that I stage see what you mean okay yeah anyway now both of them are great yeah <laughs> um so we we're like okay let's see if that can work and then you know sharing the whole mummy thing and then that's how instagram grew but that was only from about 2020 a bit later okay maybe late 2020 2021 yeah is when we oh actually 2021 for sure okay. um is when i was pregnant with my son 
that yeah. I started to, you know, share that kind of like pregnancy and motherhood content. Yeah. Um, and then TikTok was in 2022. So wow. it's not been very long. And that's your biggest platform now. It is. Yeah. We're about 150K now. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. So I, I just want to <laughs> dive into your strategy, I think across all three, mm -hmm. to be honest. So if we go back to YouTube mm -hmm. right now, how do you approach creating content? Do you have like a schedule? Do you have, is it like someone that I was speaking to someone recently who actually worked at YouTube and he was breaking down to me that there's always two different types of creators mm -hmm. there's like the creatives and then like the nerds yeah and the nerds are the ones who <laughs> i'm a nerd a nerd <laughs> is the one who i have like a whole schedule and i've like done all this research and that's how i'm coming up with my content and the creatives are like i'm just gonna see what happens mm -hmm. and they just find content that way yeah you know how would you define yourself honestly we're a bit of a i wouldn't, I wouldn't even say we're i am a mix of both mm -hmm. aj is more of the nerd okay he is nerd to the extreme <laughs> is it algorithm yeah or like yeah it. that's me <laughs> hashtags tags whatever it is oh my gosh i need a bit of that a bit more of that to be honest i'm a nerd in the sense of being very strategic in my okay. thinking and i mean just the way that i've grown in my career and like leading different teams and mm. things like that i've applied that to being a creative as well mm. because i want to I, I was like oh this could actually become a very viable business yeah um so that's when i was like okay maybe I, instead of me pouring all of that skill into somebody else's business mm. how do we do it into ours and yeah that's where like the scheduling comes into play while yeah. AJ knows all the algorithm yeah and then the creative part my brain is just sparking a, like a million times an hour when I yeah. see things I'm like okay maybe we can recreate that or like share our story in this funny way mm. um so yeah and I guess we bounce off each other in that way too yeah We're both nerds and creatives yeah love that time. dream team <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> would you say for YouTube in terms of your ideation mm. and your video topics do you go based on trends do you go based on what your audience are looking for like where how do you come up with the video themes that you do yeah do you know what this has been quite a challenge for us so really yeah i would say because we're kind of like a personality account yeah it's never like at the beginning it was never about like you know if we're following a trend it's more like what we're doing in our lives and sharing that yeah i think now we're, we're thinking more strategically around how do we follow what's happening how do we leverage things like christmas how yeah do we plan festive content um rather than like this is what we did today like yeah. how do we kind of like make that happen mm -hmm. um so like i think more so now we're thinking about how we can be a little bit more trend centric mm -hmm. but not not in like i feel like a lot of couple channels a lot of like couple mm -hmm. platforms have like they're, they're doing like the same kind of thing yeah. over and over again um so we want to like be a bit different from that yeah while still like, you know being authentic to ourselves while yeah. still like thinking what is going to be interesting for our audience so yeah kind of stepping into that we're in like a bit of a bridge section right now oh, yeah nice <laughs> yeah it, it can be difficult can't it because sometimes mm -hmm. when you follow trends too much mm -hmm. you grow an audience based on the trend yeah. and you see it all the time on TikTok and people get stuck in the trend mm -hmm. and they can't do anything but that trend and yeah. sometimes that's like a hard place to be in exactly so how would you say your approach to kind of content ideation differs when it comes to your short form platforms like Instagram and like TikTok yeah well we kind of like separate um it strategically so we'll right. say TikTok is for discovery okay so people yeah, just great. discover our account and then Instagram and YouTube our community as I was mm -hmm. saying but different kind of community mm -hmm. um YouTube is a type of community who are highly invested they really want to know what's going on in our lives and like they're the type that like you know having like a longer video they're going to watch it through that mm -hmm. kind of thing which is amazing i still can't believe people will actually do that with our content oh my watch gosh. it what when you get <laughs> like when you look at things like watch hours yeah i'm always like that makes absolutely no sense to me when it says like thousands of hours of your content was watched this week and i'm like i can't comprehend yeah. the idea that someone sat and watched thousands of hours <laughs> like i can't i physically can't comprehend yeah, it <laughs> like even now i'm like those numbers aren't right <laughs> yeah, but they are people are watching your content and a lot of it exactly which is so which is so ludicrous to me but mm. i think that's what makes youtube such a special platform to mm. us because it's not just where we started but it's like where people are like the highly you know highly yes. invested yes in advocate exactly yeah it's incredible yeah. And no matter what we're doing i feel like a lot of our audience on other platforms are also like our youtube audience too like right. they find us on different yeah. places yeah which is incredible to mm. have you know like, those kind of people rooting for you mm. and then with instagram community in the sense of you know um people really love love which is great yeah, yeah. so <laughs> i think people just like really interested in our love story and mm. some have been there for for a really long time as well mm. especially as we've had our children but I've, i'll say it's more like topical yeah you Community yeah. rather than us community right so the topics of couple of family of like um sometimes
sometimes I'll do like motherhood or like very like woman centric sort of topics. But I think it really has to kind of like be around a topic rather than just be about what we're doing. If that okay. makes sense. Yeah, that does yeah. make sense. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you've got a really great grip and understanding of your audience, like how they differ per platform and what they want from you. Mm-hmm. How do you feel like you got to that stage? Ooh, oh, <laughs> gosh. I don't even feel like I'm fully there. Like I said, I need to be more nerdy like you and AJ. Um, but I think this really come with time and trying mm-hmm and error as well mm. AJ's always saying look let's not be too scared of doing new things yeah. and things that might not land yeah because we're still in that grace period of you know we're still growing even though we've got to a good place and mm. we're still growing where like people aren't like no you post this exact type of video all yes. the time yeah. you know yeah um so that's like a great kind of zone for experimenting and mm. you know thinking outside of the box and mm. trying new things out so yeah that's kind of like where we delve but also um where we kind of try to stretch ourselves so mm-hmm. right now we're in the stretching period of hey how about on our short forms we try doing a series over a period nice. of time that might be yeah. something cool to start so yeah yeah just trial and error and lots of tests really oh my gosh yeah I mean yeah. I'm I again had another conversation I always say on the mic that I never remember who I have the conversations with because there are so many conversations <laughs> yeah. I'm like I can't Good. remember when this happened yeah <laughs> speaking to someone and we were talking about the need for testing and learning and how it's, it's so much more present now than I feel like it has ever been mm-hmm. on social media mm-hmm. Because platforms are changing and we've known that for a couple of years, right? Platforms are changing, but the audience, like we're changing, our audiences are changing, our viewers are changing, and then trends are even moving quicker. Like everything's evolving at such a speed that your strategy, which worked last month, doesn't work anymore. Ah, And it's it's actually so frustrating. (laughs) Like every day I'm like, right, what's next then? Yeah. It's difficult. You know, it doesn't even compare to back in the day where it was like, you know, you just share the same kind of photos for five years and then you're totally fine. Exactly. So much more complicated. So (laughs) I always think with you in your life, you Mm -hmm. literally, I'm in awe because I'm like, I don't understand how you balance everything because you have two children. Yeah. Two toddlers. Two toddlers. (laughs) How, wait, so how old specifically? Um, So our daughter's three years old and then our son has just turned two. Wow. Very little, little. Yeah. My nephew just turned two, literally (laughs) last month or something. Yeah. So I love that because now I have such a good frame of reference. Mm -hmm. And again, now I'm in even more awe because I'm like, oh my God. Wrong, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know how you do it. So, and also you're across multiple chat, um, platforms and you're you're creating so much content and stuff. Mm. So, first of all, you do this full time. Yeah. And your now. husband do as, does as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when did you make that decision? Um, It was literally just a few months ago. Oh, wow. That I went full time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a little fish in a big pond now because yeah. I think taking that leap was such a huge sign of like, okay, this is like serious now. Like this is where we're going and like yeah. where we want to build our career. So that was amazing. Um, my husband's been full-time for a little while now. Okay. Almost a year now. Um, nice. He's the brains behind the mission, I must <laughs> say. I have to say on camera because otherwise we'll be like, why did you not say that? <laughs> you didn't podcast? mention that I'm the brains. <laughs> <laughs> he is so, you know, with all the algorithm and all that yeah. he knows. Like he's really such like a, a big brain. Walking. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like he's been full-time for a year, but then for myself, I was full-time since about September and and August yeah so how comes you made the decision to go full-time yeah well I think just knowing how well we work together Mm. the only reason we've been able to grow all three platforms I admire people who are able to do that on their own yeah like how yeah it's not yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's a lot of work (laughs) crazy crazy yeah so like even being present on all three platforms like yourself I can imagine that's like such a massive challenge yeah um so yeah being able to like work together strategize together uh, create content together as mm. well has been has been really really cool yeah um and yeah as I said I uh, got to a point where like it was like a junction where I was like okay I'm I have a lot of skills mm. and I'm pouring this into somebody else's mm. business mm. and I mean love that I used to work in um cause-led organizations so oh, cool. yeah I love that amazing yeah, yeah. So already in that at least it's meaningful mm. but at the same time just thought you know being able to build that into what we're doing and like one of our main values is family mm. and our kids are so young so yeah. we want to be able to have the flexibility to spend time with them and also build something that's sustainable too because it's you know it, it's ourselves like yeah. our own thing yeah you're investing um, in yourself yeah, yeah precisely precisely so that's why I took the plunge which I didn't want to at a point I was like oh my really God, it's really scary it's scary it's so scary yeah. it's like one of the scariest decisions you can make because it's literally the definition of backing yourself yeah yeah putting 100%. it all on yourself <laughs> <laughs> and it's like now you have to do the work yeah Aww. it's yeah. So like it's so intense. How did you find your first couple of weeks of 
you know, doing this full time and also working full time with your husband? What was that like? Yeah. Well, to be honest, I feel like I'm really glad that we've built up to that point mm. because we had like along the journey, there has been times where we've been a bit like, well, you're so annoying. <laughs> like, like this. What, does I, if that is the worst, <laughs> then I am shocked. <laughs> I feel like I get that like that with Jay and like yeah. he helps me a bit for like mm. a few hours a week. We don't like he has his like he has a, his own job. Yeah. I cannot imagine us working full time together and on content that involves both of us. Mm, yeah. It can get intense sometimes. Yeah. I'm sure. And we're all about authenticity as well. We don't mm. want to be like, such a happy couple. Yeah. When we're, it's like, we're not feeling it. Mm. So like, obviously there are times where we, we produce a bit less when we're like, okay, this is family time or, you know, we're working mm. on a personal project and that's it. So I think it's just like creating healthy boundaries yeah. as well yeah. and pouring into each other's cups too. I'm such an advocate for like AJ doing his own thing, going mm. to the gym, like spending time with his boys. And he does the same with me like in the weekend I got to speak at a women's event oh, amazing. yeah and spend time with friends and do this kind yeah. of thing and he's with the toddlers at home so yeah. always trying to like support each other in that kind of way so it helps to give more of like a healthy balance rather mm. than make it feel as full on as it sounds and it is full on yeah but yeah yeah I just think <laughs> yeah I, ju I just think it's so impressive because I remember me and Jay used to have like a joint Instagram channel together the orange the orange collective oh, yeah oh my gosh that was years ago but yeah we used to have a joint Instagram and to be fair that was okay because yeah. it was like just like a side hustle and like there was no pressure on it but I do remember we we had to have a, a conversation in the early days when we started getting brand collabs and we were going to restaurants and creating content for them mm -hmm. and we had to have a conversation because I was like okay we need to figure out how we balance this because really this should be fun yeah. like we're going out for dinner we're getting paid to go to this restaurant and we're having this great food and creating content it should be fun but the first few deals we did he was getting so in I mean he'll be listening to this work, he was right? getting so intense with the <laughs> photos and stuff to the point where I was like I've not had a hot meal in ages because you take so long to get the content and I'm so, don't get me wrong we need to get good content but we've got when do we draw a line right when do we say do you know what that's yeah. enough let's enjoy our meal now so we had to have a real conversation about it did you feel like you had to have a conversation in the early days to really like figure yeah. out how that was gonna work oh my gosh in the early days still now yeah um especially with like you know these wonderful experiences mm. that were opportune um being in the field that we are like we get to work with hotel collections oh, and you know like so many amazing um brands so mm. like for example if we're on an experience like in the summer we went to greece actually where did we go yeah we went to greece lovely with our whole family actually uh, and they, they, they flew our mom out too which is amazing so sorry was this with um the tourism board at in Greece or was this with like a hotel? A hotel collection. Oh, that's yeah. so yeah. cool. I know, isn't it so great? I love and they're like, that. oh, if you need extra hands, because we're like, oh, we we'll be able to get the content all right. Yeah. But like um our quality, like we try to make it up mm. here, especially with photography and mm. videography and that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so it'll be great if we could have some kind of support. So I work more saying it as lower your expectations. So we're like, yeah. oh, no problem, we'll bring mum. We're like, fantastic. Because what you need on a on a holiday with toddlers is yeah. a, is a grandparent. Yeah, <laughs> that was yes. really helpful. I mean, even I know that and I have no kids but just with my nephew I'm like yeah so anyone me and my can? husband are there and I'm like is there anyone else who can help or is it is it just us okay right, that was us yeah so when it came to actually getting the content though we had a day where we got like an amazing meal where it was just yeah. me and him and then grandma was looking after the kids and um like we wanted to just enjoy it and AJ's that type of person will be like oh we need to get like yeah the perfect you know angles and you know like let's do a video like mm. this and I'm just like are we gonna yeah, I'm like, yeah, sure. But at some point we're going to put the camera down. Yeah. We've got a right? hundred pieces of, of video and I'm going to take a wild guess and say one is enough. One of these will work. Yeah. <laughs> right. And you have to have that kind of, I feel like there's yeah. always one person and yes. the, your partner is like the opposite mind. Yes. Um, so like, I feel like AJ helps us to get the work done. Yeah. While we're like on experiences, especially. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, right. Like, that's where we cut it off yeah. and <laughs> keep it going. Yeah. But I guess it's just like learning boundaries. And yeah. It's still something that we're processing now, especially because our work is our life and our our life is our work mm. so those whole like obviously those two things can like just blend together and become like 
one it's just one big mushy mess right mm. yeah so like <laughs> kind of getting like good boundaries in place and mm. really saying okay this is where the work starts or we respond to like a few comments now usually now we'll say in the first hour yeah we'll respond to comments and then after that then we'll put it down mm. and then like let's say the next day um because we post daily on on instagram now right um so like the next day we post then um i will go back to like the old post and then also comment you know that kind of thing yeah so we'll have it in particular kind yeah of times rather yeah. than all the time yeah so yeah so you've got some good processes yeah so speaking of that how do you divvy up the work Mm. <laughs> how do we do it the way we do a bit of everything and i yeah. love that like because i i feel like we're we're both skilled at everything right um but there are some things which are particular to the other person like he's better at editing short form right i'm better i'm, I'm gonna say this <laughs> i'm better at editing long form i'll say right. so myself i edit yeah. our travel vlogs yeah so. <laughs> yeah yeah um so he's really great at like you know getting things done and he has the process of like okay we don't need that we're gonna cut out the video well i'll be like but they need to know everything that happens second by second yeah. <laughs> but they need to see me walk to the left because otherwise they don't know i'm now on the left yeah, exactly <laughs> like and it looks unnatural <laughs> so that's me um so yeah that really helps that like, he has that editing mind and then for me i'm really like ideation thinking Love about it. what we're doing and communicating with brands and our managers and mm. strategy and i'm so extra too like i'll send them like a whole like strategy deck of what we're going to be doing organically on our page for the next love six it. months so <laughs> i love it i love it yeah so let's talk a bit more about that right because we both do this full time so this is a full business now yeah. so how do you earn majority of your income is it mostly brand partnerships is it something else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll say mostly brand partnerships. Mm -hmm. And we're delving now, we're trying to stretch an area of affiliate marketing as Great. well. And I think what's awesome is being able to be in different kind of like niches at the same time, because lifestyle is just such, mm -hmm. just so massive. Mm -hmm. um, but like what's what's really helpful for us is that we're a couple, but also like a man and a woman. And then also oh, we've yeah, got cool. kids and also we live in a house, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like a lot of things at the same time. So like things, pages like LTK, Amazon, Storefront is yeah. what we're really trying to, to yeah. leverage more and more now gosh yeah you're like a brand's dream aren't you because you really can <laughs> everything yeah. you can cover so many different bases <laughs> so do you have management or do you manage yourself um so we have management now yeah oh, yeah yeah and it's been great oh, and amazing. like i will always encourage like other creators mm. to start with management i would say okay. not right at the beginning yeah right at the beginning just do it because you love it mm. like it's always best when you're doing something just because you enjoy it mm. and then when when it grows to a certain point getting management has been such a game changer for us oh that's so good yeah to hear. Yeah. So how has it helped you? Like, is it because I feel like people find value from management in different ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, well, they're bringing me different deals that I never would have got by myself. Mm -hmm. Other times it's like, well, they manage my inbox. And we all know how disastrous public inboxes can be. And contracts. So yeah, exactly. Right. So yeah. where do you feel like you get the most value? Um, well, I'll, I'll definitely say brand relationships that like they've already had and then being able to tap into that. In fact, our management were doing really well in Canada and America. They still are. They're amazing. Like, yeah. Yeah. huge there um and then they started tapping into the uk market when we were onboarded right yeah so they got in a good time yeah, yeah exactly such a good time because we were one of their first talent um but also them they're trying to build relationships with our names on their tongues so yeah that's been really good yeah so i don't know if like other people have had the same kind of experience with new management because mm. i think you know you hear some horror stories out there when it comes to management um but then they're really like relationship focused so um like in terms of like our relationship being able to like go out for a meal and just chill mm -hmm. and I feel like that's really aided our relationship and then also with contracts I'm not trying to like, <laughs> I'm tr I've actually now learned like okay I need to study contracts yeah it like, is such a like uh, like just not fun part of the job right yeah, yeah. and admin in general mm -hmm. and things like that it can be like a bit of like a head banger yeah um so yeah like they've really been you know so helpful in managing all of those different yeah. aspects and yeah I think actually since they got on that's when we've had our biggest partnerships like with Bosch yeah with apple mm. with actually even the youtube partnership like a lot of that has come oh, amazing them. yeah how did you find them just because the main reason why i'm like really interested in this is because a lot of creators are ready for management yeah. but finding the right management as you said there's been a lot of horror stories mm -hmm. and people often ask me my recommendation and i only ever really have one mm. if that because i'm like i need to know 
the people. Yeah. And I don't know everyone in every agency. So I'm like, I can't comfortably recommend a lot of people. So I just love to hear how you went about finding yours. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I'm not going to give a really good response because they found us. I was going to say, did they yeah, find you? Yeah, they found yeah. us. Um, and I have no idea how they found mm. us either. But we were really hoping to get managed. We we're in the same like kind of junction at the point before mm. they found us that oh like it'll really help I hear mm. and at least like we're not you know having to like pitch so much and feel like you know we're getting rejected and are we good enough yeah and that comes with it's like, such a mindset thing isn't oh, it yeah it is it can yeah. really rock you for sure for sure so I feel like just building our page we, we just said you know what instead of focusing on trying to find management mm. how about we try to focus on trying to make our page as valuable as possible yeah in lots of different ways like um one of the things that our management actually told us about when we were first us onboarded is that we've recently pivoted from just doing funny content to actually doing content that like brands can see themselves fitting yes, in I love that yeah yeah, yeah. It's like, oh I didn't even notice that. Yeah. 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 That's so important. I always, call, I call it Marcus Ball content, but that's not what it's called. I just made it up. But <laughs> you know, you just need a name to refer back to. Yeah. It. No, but it adds up. It's yeah. so important. <laughs> yeah. It makes It's a good name, yeah. right? Um, it's so important though. Like I always say, and this is actually something that a lot of creators struggle with, especially mm. on TikTok. Mm. Cause I remember seeing, I'm always in like people's comments and stuff just cause I find it really interesting to hear like what, how people think. And whenever I used to see those videos where people would talk about like how much they'd earned as a creator in the comments, I would always always see big creators mm. saying this is like cap not true I have a million followers or whatever on TikTok yeah. and I don't earn any money from it and then I would look at their content because I'd be like there's no way if you've got a million followers on TikTok you should be earning some money for your work yeah and I would look at their content and I'm like this is why because you've created great content for your audience and, and they love it and that's amazing I cannot think of one brand that would look at your content and think yep I can imagine my my brand being here. I want my product to be amongst this. Yeah. Either because it's like controversial or messy in the sense where it's like purposely trying to irritate people mm. or it's just the type of content where I'm like nothing fits. Yeah. And people don't realize, you know, you can have a million followers and not earn an income from mm. your audience yeah. purely because of that one mistake, yeah. which is so wild when you really think about it. Crazy. So it's amazing that you clocked onto that. Yeah. You were just doing that. And naturally. it wasn't early on. And actually when I realized that, I mean, when that was mentioned, I was like, oh my gosh, it's been like, I just had a look at the old content that we were posting. And that was the mindset. Like, oh, we just want to please our audience. Yeah. We want to do like, you know, maybe like certain types of sketches are working to this trending sound. So mm. let's do a bit of that rather than actually mm. thinking, how do we build ourselves up as a brand, mm. as a lifestyle brand, apart from just like a couple who pops up, you know, every now and, and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the, yeah, that kind of like, after that was mentioned, then we started thinking, how do we embed this into our strategy mm. on all of the different platforms as well? Especially TikTok was a challenge because, you know, TikTok, as soon as you do something that really works, like mm. you said it actually, you yeah. know, people will just regurgitate the exact same content time yeah. and time again. And there's a temptation to do that because it's like, oh, that's what TikTok it works. likes. Let's feed the beast yeah. kind yes. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it takes so much like internal strength to be like, no, no, I can do other things. Yeah. I know I could also get my audience to like this different format of content I don't always have to use the same sound bite and do the same trend mm -hmm. every single time I know I can carry my audience through to another type of content yeah, too be versatile. So that's, yeah exactly yeah. so that's incredible mm -hmm. okay so I mean this has been such a great conversation I feel like you've also given me a bunch of tips for working with Jay <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna come home and be like listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need to we're gonna do some things to make this a bit better <laughs> so I get, let's wrap up with what would be your best piece of advice to a content creator listening to this who is trying to make it their full-time job? Oh, oh my mm. gosh. Let me mm. think about it. What would be my best piece of advice? I would say, I would say your journey is your own. Ooh. You know, just as we're saying, like, you know, we see some creators who have a million and aren't earning money. There's also creators who have like not much following and they're earning a lot of money. There's so much variety yeah. in the creator space. Yeah. And with content in general, mm. you might look at someone's content and be like, whoa, that's incredible. How do they do that? And like, but they've been creators for 12 years. Yeah. Also. yeah. And they've got like a team. They've got yeah. a team, right? Mm. Or like, you know, they're present on every platform and posting all the time. Maybe they have a team, mm. you know? Mm. Um, so I think like for the biggest um, like growth period for us was when we just started to own our journey. Like, what do we have to give? Mm. Like in terms of our message, in terms of our time, like how much do we have to pour into this? Where do we want it to go? And yeah. then like really owning that and leveraging our skill too. And like, so like, you know, going full-time came after being part-time and juggling a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, especially where I was in my career, I was a head of 
um, a department with yeah, influence wow, so management. Senior as well. So yeah. My gosh. Yeah. Indeed. And like we had 60 markets um, wow. in that organization that I was managing there, you know, in that mm. kind of like influence and partnership space. So like being able to see what other people are doing and study that mm. and also see what strengths I have to give and mm. like just in general, what am I good at? Mm. And then seeing how we can build that into our content has been really, really helpful. So that's what I would encourage. Like, you know, look at what you're, what's on your plate, what's in front of you right now, mm. how to leverage that and own your journey and, and go get your bag. Yes. <laughs> uh, I love that. What a great ending. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure everyone listening is thinking, oh my God, what a great episode. I will put links below so that everyone can follow you afterwards. And yeah, <laughs> I just really appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's been oh. so great. Honestly, such an honor to be here. That's and so you're sweet. such a dime. You know, I love you. <laughs> great to be in your company. Oh, <laughs> you babe. Flattery will get you everywhere, guys. In case you're listening, that is the way to my heart. Okay. <laughs> 